Thursday. Am I right? Welcome. I am sitting on a couch. I don't usually sit on couches in videos. I don't know why. Um, actually, I don't really spend a lot of time here watching the television. Uh, I guess my lifestyle choice was that I would rather create things, create video content than consume video content. I still watch I still watch some things. Um, but for the most part, I would rather be out creating something than consuming it. Um, so that's my decision. Today, we're talking about... Um, it's. I only really ever get three questions um, on the full wedding day videos. The first one is what autofocus settings do you use? Uh, the answer is... AFC, autofocus continuous, if you're Canon, servo, um, Sony, I don't know what that is. There's a video about it if you wanna learn more. I'm getting a haircut later today, so tomorrow's video, my hair will be smaller, which is important information for you to know about. Second question that I get a lot is uh, what metering mode I'm using, and my camera's always on matrix metering. Uh, and also, I never really pay that close of attention to my meter. I use it to make sure that I'm at least like kind of in the ballpark, but I'm not trying to zero it out on every single shot. And the third question that I get, um, a lot of people, when you watch the full wedding day video, you see that I shoot a lot of frames. Usually on a wedding day, I'm shooting about 2,200 images, I would say, which I think personally seems a little bit low uh, knowing what other people shoot. I think I'm when I do cut together the full wedding day videos, it's like the time that I'm actively taking a lot of photos. Uh, so it might seem like I overshoot, like I shoot 10,000 frames in a wedding day, but in eight to 10 hour day, usually I'm sitting around, I would say somewhere between 2,000 to 2,500 for that typical day. And then on top of that, my second photographer, um, usually shoot somewhere like 1200, 1400, somewhere in that ballpark. So end of the day, I would say most of my weddings, um, 3,500 images total um, between myself and my second. Uh, that's usually what I'm delivering to my editor. Um, I know that because I have to pay them to call for me. Um, so individual images, I would rather shoot a little bit lower, save some money there. Um, and also kind of shooting with intent to actually deliver frames and not just like out there just taking pictures of stuff that you're not gonna deliver. So shoot in the good light and make sure that those frames are gonna be frames that you're gonna keep. Um, if it's bad light, don't just take pictures for the sake of taking pictures, go somewhere else. For the actual number of frames that I deliver, um, it's obviously a sliding scale. It depends completely on what happens on the day. If um, certain cultures, I'll be doing a photo of the bride and groom with every couple that's at the wedding. Um, my file count obviously goes up a little bit. If I am just at a regular wedding, like the full wedding day videos that you've seen, I would say that on most cases, I'm delivering about 700 images total. Um, it's kind of the sliding scale between about 500 to 900, but most of the days um, I'm aiming for like 725, um, 750. But maybe aiming is the wrong word. It's really whatever the wedding necessitates, but I'm always kind of within that 500 to 900 um, image ballpark. It's super rare that I'll go over a thousand images. Um, I don't think I've delivered over a thousand images for a wedding day in a significant amount of time. And even if I'm just there for like a six hour day or a four hour day, or I've done a three hour day a couple weeks ago, um, I'm still delivering somewhere around like 450, 500 images, um, regardless of the shortness of the day. I feel like that's kind of the, the core elements that happen at a wedding um, usually kind of fit into that 400 to 500 um, image ballpark to be like kind of basic deliverables of kind of what happens in family photos. And then if we're there for longer, obviously we're just capturing more things, um, entrances, reception, first dances, all of that good stuff. And that's what pushes the file count a little bit higher. I don't think that there is a right or wrong number of images to deliver. It's whatever I think tells the story the best. And personally, I always err on the side of maybe not delivering a photo if I'm, if uh, we're gonna get to culling tomorrow. And if I am kind of going through things and I'm like, ah, I just don't know about that shot, I don't include it, unless it's like obviously a family shot that they need. Um, and also for family formals, I'm only including one or two. I uh, just make sure that everyone's eyes are open, everybody looks good. I usually include um, a horizontal that's like kind of three quarter length or um, depending on the side of the group, I guess. Um, and then a vertical as well if the I don't know, the size of the group facilitates that as well. And I think that those, that's more than good enough. I want the entire gallery to be something that they can actually flip through like image by image. And it tells a story rather than just being like the same family shot, like eight variations of it over and over again, um, which I don't think is the best experience for um, somebody looking through their wedding photos. That's all from the couch today. I will be on my computer tomorrow with shorter hair uh, doing some culling. Uh, we're not actually gonna cull through an entire wedding because that would be the most boring video in the history of time, but I'm gonna show you my process for that and how to make your selects with efficiency so you have more time to go and live your life in the summer and sit on couches if you want because uh, it's couch sitting day. It's not couch sitting day. I'm actually at a racetrack right now. I'm, I recorded this video on Wednesday. I don't usually do that, but today I did that, so. So sorry for the lies at the beginning when I was like, ah, oh, it's Thursday, because it's actually Wednesday. This is Lindsay's camera. It's a Nikon D810, 85 millimeter f1.8. Um, it's cracked, kind of tilt shifts sometimes, accidentally, which is kind of fun, I think. This is electrical tape. You can just buy these grips to replace them, but 
Lindsay went the electrical tape route rather than just uh, spending the $10 to get fancy new grips. Also, if you own a bunch of Nikon or Canon cameras, um, Sony kind of too. Um, their program's not quite there yet, I don't think, um, at least in Canada. If you own a bunch of these, you can get uh, into NPS, which is Nikon Professional Services. And when you send your camera back in, they will just like regrip every single piece of rubber and make it look like brand new again, um, which is really, really cool. And it's like surprisingly not expensive. Um, also, NPS in Canada is amazing because you have access to their entire loaner pool. So any lens that Nikon makes um, in Canada, I have access to for free. And to be an NPS member, there is no subscription fee or anything like that. It's just an entirely free program to join if you have um, I think it's two professional bodies, two professional lenses, and you need to get another professional that's in the program to like uh, sign and say that you are in fact a working professional photographer. That's a bit weird. But then you get one, you get like crazy fast turnaround on any repairs. Um, you also get discounts. You also get access to their loaner pool. And the loaner pool is amazing because I can just email them and be like, hey, I need um, a 600 millimeter F4. I don't even know if they make that lens. Um, and they will ship it to me and it'll come to my house and I get to use it for two weeks and then I send it back and there's no rental fee on it. So it's amazing. So yeah, if you have a lot of Nikon or Canon equipment, definitely get in touch with them and be part of their professional services if you're a professional photographer. Um, that's all for today. Hope you have a lovely day.